Hi, Alan Stratton from Meswood Turns. This project's video is inspired by a recent club demonstration and by an article in the American Woodturner. The concept is simple. Let's make a rolling pin. You should be able to just take laminated stock, turn handles on it, and away we go. Well, not quite. We can do better. Just as in the food series Chopped, a chef there is, is given ingredients, but then is expected to transform, to escalate it in some way, shape, or form, not just to heat it up and to serve it. So the same thing with our wood turning. We need to escalate this more. I think we can do better than the demonstration and the what was contained in the wood uh, article in the wood turner. To me, a uh, a laminated stock that has the handles coming through that are also laminated is a little bit tacky. We can do better. And by doing better, it just me it's a little bit more work, but this is within our grasp. To have a rolling pin and a handle that doesn't show the laminations. So I'd like to do that in this video. Now I had been of the opinion that when I did a rolling pin it needed to have a ball bearing in it and that would have been the highest level of a rolling pin but according to a former pastry chef at the club meeting it's not so a ball bearing rolling pin will push dough in front of it and what you really want to do is to have the pin roll over it and that takes the integrated handles so in this case I want to make a laminated rolling pin but these handles are separate and not only are they separate, I've incorporated some additional interesting elements in it that are actually one-third of a Celtic knot. So let's take this and uh, transform this rolling pin into a higher order rolling pin. I had a variety of thin wood scraps left over from other projects. The first task is to clean it all up, then glue it all together. I'm using Type on 3 for more water resistance. Its longer set time also helps with so much surface to spread glue on. Hotel key cards make great glue spreaders. A helper is a must. Now to prep the wood for the handle. All that I want to do right now is to rough turn it round into a consistent cylinder. Similar to last week's video, I need a template. This time, I made a hexagon for a six-loop Celtic knot. I plan to offset every other loop by about one-half inch by putting a spacer at the end of the blank in the cutting slit. Now I'm screwing the plywood template to the end of the wood blank. This time, I'm remembering to apply hot melt to keep the plywood template from rotating on the screw. Then reset my sled for the angle and distance from the end for this Celtic knot. Hot melt glue is sufficient to keep stops in place. After adding the top reinforcement, I can make the first cut. Then flip it around to cut the other end. Same angles, so why not two at the same setting? And glue in the slice. While waiting for the glue to dry, I'm starting to rough out the main part of the rolling pin. I'm using a gouge for the rough part, then switch to a skew for skew practice. I'm cutting a tenon on both ends of the pin portion since I'll want to mount both ends in a scroll chuck. Since I want separate handles from the pin, it is time to drill the ends. However, for something this long from the spindle, I'm going to use my steady rest to support the rolling pin during the drilling. With the steady rest, the cylinder is as steady as it could ever be. Now for cut number two. I've reinforced the cylinder, inserted a spacer, and make the cut. Then glue in the slice. Here is where I changed my plan. I noticed an interesting pattern emerging. With the loop being offset, I think the interplay of the two loops is interesting. I went to my wife to discuss stopping with the two loops instead of completing the full knot. With the two ends drilled out, I need to finish the pin 
but cannot hold it any longer with the tenons. With the holes in both ends, I cannot mount it between centers. So I'm turning two end plugs to fit into the handle holes so that I can mount the rolling pin between centers. Now I have the rolling pin mounted again between centers. My skew is my preferred tool. I don't want to take it, the wood down very much, just enough to remove some defects and to get the cylinder to have a consistent diameter across its entire length. One of the challenges of a rolling pin is turning the cylinder totally consistent. I have it close, so I'm now using a piece of plywood with 80 grit on its surface. As I sand, I'm noting that one of my wood plies is almost gone. I decided to take it down just a little more, so I don't leave just a trace of the ply. Another side effect is that the glue portion is a little harder to sand. I can feel the difference in the pin. I'm switching back to a skew. The skew is not affected by the difference in hardness. Then power sand. I'm using the tool rest to help support the drill and to apply consistent pressure with the sander. I'm hoping this will prevent over sanding softer wood. Now it is sanded, but I still need to address the ends. This is the scary part. My plugs are only a press fit in the ends, and I need to cut off the tenons and clean up the ends. However, my fears were overstated. I was able to cut away the tenon by parting down to the plug. No problem. I'm using a sanding disc mounted in a Jacobs chuck in the headstock to sand the two ends. Now for the handles. I made a story stick with the measures. I've laid out the measures. Next, I'm parting down to critical points such as the tenon into the pin, the beginning of the cove, the maximum diameter of the handle, and such. I'm being careful to match the two handles to each other. After sanding, I'm parting at the point between the two handles. Since I have a tenon, I can mount the handles in my scroll chuck to finish off the end of each handle. Finally, glue in the handles and apply walnut oil. I do not like the look of laminations going through the handles on other people's rolling pins. So I've transformed my rolling pin, and it looks very tasty. I've saved expensive wood from being wasted in the smaller handles. I could have left the handles plain, but did transform them also. The partial Celtic knot on each handle looks good. Maybe I should call it some sort of swoosh. Since I have a great Celtic knot process, I can now deviate to achieve different effects. We'll see you again next week for another wood turning video. Please give this video a thumbs up, 
subscribe, and tell your friends. Always wear your full face shield. Goggles are not enough. Until next time, this is Alan Stratton from As Wood Turns. Keep on turning. Thank you.